Hello, everyone. Welcome to Watch Party episode 11. I'm your host, David Loveday. As always with me over there is my co-host, Robbie Tressler. Robbie, how are you doing today? Great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that was very, very stale, Robbie. I'm doing absolutely spectacular. Good, sir. All right. Let's do this, shall we? Yes, sir. Let's now, do it. We talked about this off camera. We are going to go through the WrestleManias, the WrestleMania category. Uh huh. And each WrestleMania has about 10 to 12 questions. We're going to do speed rounds. Now, off camera, we already did WrestleMania 1, so we're going to do WrestleMania 2. Mm, boy. Yeah. Alrighty. You you got all of them right in WrestleMania one. How are you feeling about WrestleMania two? Not as confident. All right, here we go. So this one I will have to give you the choices for because there are two answers. Mm. Which two superstars made their WrestleMania debut at WrestleMania two? Here are your choices: Jake Roberts, Mick Foley, Bret Hart, and Vader. Two of these are correct. Bret Hart and Jake the Snake. WrestleMania 2. Okay. WrestleMania 2 came from how many cities? Three. Correct. Which celebrity was a guest judge for the boxing match between Roddy Piper and Mr. T at WrestleMania 2? Do you need your choices? Yes. Joan Rivers, Mary Hart, Cab Calloway, Ozzy Osbourne. Joan Rivers. Cab Calloway. Never mind. <laughs> I said Joan Rivers too the first time I did this. What was the outcome of the Paul Orndorff versus Don Morocco match at WrestleMania 2? Do you need choices? I think it was a double count out. It was a double count out. You don't need choices. <laughs> Who defeated Nikolai Volkov at WrestleMania 2? Do you need like choices? Options? Yep. Yes. Barry Windham, Corporal Kirchner, Mike Rotunda, or Iron Sheik? Corporal Kirshner. That is correct. Who is not a part of the open invitational 20 man battle royal battle royal at WrestleMania 2? Bill Fralick, Lawrence Taylor, William Refrigerator Perry, Harvey Martin. Lawrence Taylor. That is correct, because he was not in the company until WrestleMania 11 against Bam Bam Bigelow. For some reason, they thought a football star main eventing WrestleMania was a good idea. <laughs> hey! You, you got to cut him some slack, though. He was actually somewhat okay in that match. Except for the match was having, awful. For not having any experience, though. He's actually somewhat fine in that match. Right. Which was not a host city for WrestleMania 2? Los Angeles, Chicago, Detroit, New York. New York. Um, that is wrong, is Detroit. <sighs> Who did Hulk Hogan face at WrestleMania 2? King Kong Bundy. I was about to say, if you need a choice. <laughs> <laughs> the Los Angeles Memorial Sports Arena was one of the venues for WrestleMania 2. Which rock and roll star has performed at the historic site, at the historic site uh -huh, 17 times since 2002? Here are your choices. Elvis Presley, Ricky Martin, Bruce Springsteen, or Sting, not the wrestling. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now it gets hard. Bruce Springsteen. And that is correct. Okay, good. Who did the British Bulldogs beat to win the tag team titles at WrestleMania 2? Do you need choices? Yeah. The Moon Dogs, the Heart Foundation. Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine, Jack and Jerry Briscoe. Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine. That is correct. I critique celebrity fashion on the E! Network, and I was a guest ring announcer at WrestleMania 2. Hey, who am I? Here are your choices. Susan St. James, Joan Rivers, Martha Stewart, and Mr. Blackwell. Susan St. James. Joan Rivers. <laughs> Frank, that's where Joan Rivers, that's what she did. Okay. 
Who was King Kong Bundy's manager for his match against Hulk Hogan in WrestleMania 2? Oh, no. Any choice? Yes. Bobby Heenan, the Grand Wizard, Freddie Blassie, Lou Alvada. Okay, it's Bobby Heenan. It is Bobby Heenan. I was the last one. Jimmy Hart, that's why. Ah, okay. Last one. Who was the ring announcer for the Los Angeles Sports Memorial Arena portion of WrestleMania 2? So who was, who was the ring announcer for the Los Angeles portion? <laughs> do you need... Do you, do you need... An answers? Yes. Howard Finkel, Michael Buffer, Gorilla Monsoon, Lee Marshall. Howard Finkel. Lee Marshall. <laughs> There we go. I'm actually, yeah, I'm we're actually surprised. I got a lot more right than I thought I would. Yeah. Watched. We're going to hop into WrestleMania. I was about to say WrestleMania 2. We're going to hop into Weekend Review. <laughs> um, but what we're going to do, we talked about this off camera. We're going to wait to say Raw before, after we do the Elimination Chamber one thing. So there's no spoilers mm -hmm. of what our review is going to be. If there's spoilers at Elimination Chamber, if you're not looking for spoilers, why do you watch us? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> our, our show, one half of our show is literally spoilers. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, Robbie, tell us the... Give us a quick rundown of what happened on Impact. All right, I'm just going to give you a few of the important parts. Josh Alexander versus TJP. Solid match for the X Division title. <laughs> TJP retained. You can watch it. Nothing else. Really important happened after that. Disp uh, d apart from Finn Juice debuting, which is David Finley, Juice Robinson from New Japan. Now I have a question. <laughs> I might have an answer. Did you make that name, or was that an actual name for them? <laughs> That's their actual name. Oh my god, Finn Juice. Wasn't wasn't Juice Robinson in another team? Lifeblood. Maybe. He was in that team during G1 Supercard. I remember that. <laughs> okay, then probably. But yeah, Finjuice debuted, won the match, might be challenging for the Impact Tag it's Team title. Horrible name. For later. Yeah, it's okay. And then the main event, old school rules match, which is basically an extreme rules match. Moose versus Tommy Dreamer. Moose yes. absolutely wrecked. Uh, okay, so Moose wrecked. So Moose wrecked. <laughs> Moose destroyed Tommy Dreamer. Moose is the wiener. And <laughs> that, that, that's it. All right, let's talk. You watched NXT, correct? Yep. AEW, I, um, I said this off camera, but I'm sorry if you feel like you're being misrepresented on the show. Number one, you probably don't watch this anyways. Number two, <laughs> we only, we're only two guys and only one of us has cable. <laughs> So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, can't, we can't really watch both. <laughs> the only reason I do the MOW report is because it's on YouTube. I watch yep. Dark, but there's nothing important going on in Dark. <laughs> nope. So, if there's something important that goes on in Dark, I will talk about it. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> but for right imagine now, there's the, nothing important. Imagine the world title changing on Dark. That'd be funny, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. John Cruz, the new AEW World Champion. <laughs> Lol. Baron Black, the new AEW World Champion. No. <laughs> oh no, I got one. I got one. Brandon Cutler, the new AEW World Champion. Oh my god. <laughs> No. no. Don't get me probably put a dragon head on the belt. <laughs> All right. Give us the rundown for NXT. And then I can on, do the MOW report. Kyle O'Reilly, he's alive. Thank God. All right. <laughs> teasing, a, teasing the further breaking up of the UE. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not yay. Sad boy music. <laughs> yeah, but if we get to see... Adam Cole for Skylar Riley again. It's like they did in Ring of Honor. Then, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Also, Austin Theory is back from Dexter Loomis's <laughs> band of terror. 
in his underwear and <laughs> shackled together for some reason. Sus. Okay. Moving on. Sus. Isaiah Swerve Scott is basically a full blown heel now. If Isaiah Swerve Scott already. Isaiah Swerve Scott lost to former North American champion Leon Ruff. <laughs> And it's still weird saying that to this day. <laughs> yes, it is. Because then you have to think of Leon Ruff in the high regard as guys like Ricochet and Gargano and Keith Lee and Adam Cole. Exactly. One of these things just doesn't belong here. <laughs> exactly. So. Also. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, MSK. <laughs> Are legendary. <laughs> the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Trophy presentation. When Dakota, when M MSK and Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez came out for the trophy presentation because you know they won their respective matches. So while Dakota and Raquel were kind of cutting a promo, Shanna and Nia, the women's tag team champions, come out. And they start going back and forth with each other. And the entire time this is happening, MSK and Beth Phoenix, because she was out there for the presentation as well, they're just chilling in the corner, eating popcorn, very <laughs> excited about whatever is happening in front of them. And then at the very end of it, I think Dakota like roasts Shayna or something, and Wesley basically collapses. And uh, Beth has to revive him. This is all pretend. Yeah, He, he collapses from the ultimate savagery. That came from Dakota Kai. Um, I just want to talk about something really quickly. Um, WWE, I have a bone to pick with you. <laughs> Involving MSK. <laughs> Why <laughs> would you take these guys named Dez and Wentz and give the name Wesley <laughs> to Dez? Why would you give it to Wentz? It would have been so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Also, when they first debuted, when the announcer said Wesley, I thought it was like one name, like Wesley, not Wes Lee. It's that's just a horrible name overall. Let's just go. I mean, it's, it's, a it's name not that's as bad worse, as LA It's not as bad as that. Of Eli, get out of WWE if they don't change your name. See. I can see why it's that because then it were you know when he used to say his name he goes E Li Drake but now he can go L A Knight so it still works with the same. They didn't have to change it though, <laughs> but it's still terrible and he should have just stayed Eli Drake because Bruh, you know what? Eli Drake sounds so much better. They should have made a tag team between Eli Drake and Drake Maverick. They could have called it Eli Drake Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Drake mad for it. That's beautiful. <laughs> okay. Is it my turn? <laughs> uh, almost. So, uh, in the oh, main yeah. event, it was Pete Dunne, Oni Lorcan, Danny Murch versus Finn Balor, Kyle O'Reilly, Roderick Strong. I, the rest the match wasn't very memorable, except for the ending part, where at the end, Balor's on the top rope. Adam Cole comes out, knocks Balor off the top rope. Kicks O'Reilly in the face and gives him a wicked brain buster on the steps that for a brief moment thought actually hurt him. But it turns out it didn't hurt him. He was actually just selling it really well and people fell for the trap. <laughs> that just shows how good of a seller Kyle is. Exactly. Like when you can sell and people think that you almost died. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that means you're very good at your job. <laughs> But yeah, basically, it seems they're teasing an NXT championship match between Adam Cole and Finn Balor again for some reason. And maybe they might throw Kyle O'Reilly in the mix. As long as we get Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly like like they did in Ring of Honor, I'd be fine. <laughs> oh, and also Pete Dunne pinned Finn Balor, who is the NXT champion. So um, we might see another rematch between them because, you know, whenever somebody pins the champion, that person gets a championship match most of the time. That's just the rule. <laughs> Exactly. But yeah, that's it. All right, my turn. Um, let's talk about MLW Fusion, episode 122, also known as Filthy Island, named after the place where Filthy Tom Lawler, Dominic Greeny, and Kevin Koo train, which is basically the setting this time. It's an island that 
looks like Hawaii. It may be Hawaii. I don't know. <laughs> there were five matches. Um, two of them involving Filthy Island members, Dominic Greeny and Kevin Koo. And Tom Lawler was there the entire show on commentary. <laughs> ah! I'm sorry. Just... Mm, I didn't even watch the show, like, fully, and I still don't want to hear Tom Lawler on commentary. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. So... We have... Our first match was Dominic Greeny versus Moana Loa. Um, so, I'll just read off what this says because it's very short. Moana Loa charges towards Dominic Greeny, causing him to fall on the mat. Loa flattens him with a full body drop. Loa with the cover. Greeny kicks out at two. Greeny runs over to the commentary table and tells Lawler and Nember he's putting in... He's being put in an unfair situation. This is why I don't like Dominic Greeny. <laughs> He's in a match, not an unfair situation. Dominic, fight. <laughs> okay. Lala just tells him everything will be fine and get back in the ring. They start. Greeny throws lower with a side takedown and locks in a deadly Kirafuda clutch. Baszler, I'm just kidding. Lola taps out right away. Greeny picks up the smash and victory. Boo. Okay. <laughs> the next match, Kevin Koo, who I actually like to begin with, before he joined Team Filthy. Versus Zenshi, who I like now. But of course, Zenshi continues his losing streak. Sadly. <laughs> he lost to Davari. He lost to Kevin Koo. Lost to some other guy who I don't remember. Keeps losing. Which I really don't like, because he's a very good talent. I think... This is, this is kind of off-topic. Yeah. But it also involves Zenshi. I'm pretty sure it was Zenshi. I saw a video of this man. Mm -hmm. He was competing in like an indie match in like some weird high school gym by the looks of it against yeah. some other guy I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. He goes for a moonsault. And you want to know what happens? Oh, no. <laughs> Hang on. That uh, looks like the most disgusting botch I've ever seen in my life. Oh, no. He lands directly on the top of his head. Ow! Oh, that this may have been the early years of Zenji. This man looked like he died. <laughs> that may have been the early years of Zenji, because he doesn't do that anymore. He looked, he looked like he died in the middle of the ring, and somehow he walked away, I'm pretty sure, just fine. But the way he, he took it, it looked like he legitimately died in the middle of the ring. And what makes it even worse is right after it happened, there was like a loud gasp from the audience, and then just silence. Literal, literal silence. Not a word for the rest of the okay. match. All right. <laughs> but yeah, that's Why? Okay. okay. <laughs> so, our third match after the Kevin Koo match, we head to Mexico. Why? Because it was for an Azteca jungle fight between Mil Muertes and Savio Vega. Um, there was no winner. Muerte smashes. Savio Vega gets into Selena de la Renta's face. Selena de la Renta is Mil Muerte's manager. Both of them exchange words in Spanish. Mil Muerte surprises Vega with a blind attack to get the match started. Muerte smashes Vega's head head first into a tree. The production crew starts to experience some tef some technical difficulties. We'll get back to that shortly. So, during a quick commercial break, and I'm reading this as, as I'm saying it because this part I did not see. Okay, Bobby, you remember Raw Underground? Yep. Well, now we're getting MLW Underground. <laughs> Which is like Raw Underground, but better. <laughs> okay. Um, it was actually a series before, and now they're bringing it back. Um, so, there are just, there's no... Um, TJP, last week, turned, turned on Buku now. So, TJP is a face of Impact, but a heel in MLW. Remember that. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> 
So, so yeah. Um, TJ, TJP is a heel. Um, we have Rocky Romero versus Gringo Loco, a great match, as far as I've heard. Um, Rocky Romero gets to win. And I'm sorry I'm not going really in-depth. I haven't seen it. I'm reading. I'm pretty sure so far your MLW review has taken longer than my Impact and NXT you know review combined. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at least trying to go a little bit in-depth. Dang it. <laughs> I just wanted to speed through it so we can get, move on with the action. We can we can move on with the action in a minute. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> people need to know what happened on MLW, which only like twenty people watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Loki takes on King Mo. There's no um yeah, there is no conclusion to that match. <laughs> that seems to happen a lot. Yeah. Actually, that match didn't even happen. <laughs> um, Jordan Oliver is trying to take on Jacob Fatu for the World Heavyweight Championship. He's going to take him on in two weeks' time. And Mil Muertes wins the jungle fight at the end. After... Oh, wait, no. The King of the Knockouts match... Um, I'm sorry. I'm mad. I'm... I'm wrong about the Loki um, King Mo match. That hasn't happened yet. That was what I was talking about was highlights from their last match, which was King of the Knockouts 1. This one's King of the Knockouts. Okay, so we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Jungle Fight ends. Milmuertes wins. Milmuertes digs a grave for Savio Vega. Um, before the main event, St. Laurent reviews. Reveal who made it onto Pro Wrestling Illustrated's top 10 list this week. Do you want to know these? Sure. All right. Number 10, Jordan Oliver. Number 9, Calvin Tankman. Number 8, Myron Reed. Number 7, Mil Muertes. Number 6, Richard Holiday. Number 5, Matt Kruger. Number 4, Loki. Number 3, Leo Rush. Number 2, Tom Lawler. Why? Number 1, Alexander Hammerstone. Now, the main event. King of Knockouts 2, King Mo versus Loki. Um, it's basically a big MMA match, which I actually like. It only lasted a minute and like 36 seconds with Loki coming out on top. That's the only thing I didn't like about it. And there we go. That was MLW. Sorry it took long, but I am, I'm passionate about MLW. Yes. So, there we go. Let's talk SmackDown. Uh, I didn't watch it. <laughs> well, uh, Edge and Roman are in the ring, uh, de debating with each other. Or actually, well, it's more like Edge is speaking to Roman, and Roman's like, "I'm not getting paid enough for this." We'll he, talk about just, what happens between them in a few minutes. <laughs> he's just standing there, staring at him, and, <laughs> and then. <laughs> Basically, set and uh, Jay is with him too. That's pretty important because J Sammy comes out whoa, talking about whoa, 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 everybody whoa, whoa, underestimating whoa. him, and that he's going to go to the main event at WrestleMania. Yeah, <laughs> stop. So he's in the ring, getting in the face of Roman and Edge. Then finally, Jay actually does something cool and kicks Sammy in the face. And then Roman and Edge just continue to stare at each other while Sammy's outside complaining about how unfair he's being treated. And then, probably the most important part of the show, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Apollo Crews. Now, that match wasn't the most important part. Just what happened after the match, that was the most important part. Talk to so me. Shins Shinsuke won via roll-up. The most destructive finishing maneuver <laughs> in all of pro wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> Cruz basically completely turns, he goes full heel. Yay! He, he attacks Nakamura. And Big E is sitting at a ringside. So when Big E, and for some reason he doesn't have shoes on, I don't know why. There ain't enough, but, man. I need six. Yes. So Big E gets up and like gets in Apollo's face like, dude, he's done. Leave. So, because Apollo picked up steel steps and he was going to attack Shinsuke with the steel steps, so Biggie kind of like backs him off. 
Apollo puts down the steel steps and look like he was in a walk. He's going to walk away. So when Big E goes to check on Shinsuke, Apollo picks up the steps and smacks Big E in the back with them. So he throws Big E into the ring. He throws the steps into the ring, which is, is very impressive. He like yeets them over the top rope. Ooh. He looks like he's going to do a move onto the steel steps with Big E. Well, the ref stops him. And he has the steel steps in hand. Big E rolls out of the ring onto the floor. So the ref's like, Apollo, like, put down the steps, put down the steps. And Apollo's like, you want me to put down the steps? Okay. So he throws the steps over the top rope, supposedly landing on Big E. <laughs> and after that, Big E is stretched out of the arena. So somehow, Apollo had the power to put Big E in the hospital. Oh, Apollo, sorry. of all people... Put a biggie in the hospital. Hulk smash. <laughs> but that, that was basically one of the most important parts of the show. And also, ding dong. Hello. Hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, Reginald came out. It was Shayna and I were on the show. <laughs> Bianca Belair and Sasha came out because, you know, they were mentioned by Shayna and Naya. Reginald came out to, let's just say, simp. Sasha, for some reason, I, d I don't understand why he is in with Sasha when he's with Carmella or the yeah. sommelier of Carmella, but he's hitting on Sasha basically. Like, I'm sorry, why? <laughs> Reginald, do your job. <laughs> yes. So basically, it's a six person tag match Sasha, Bianca, and Reginald. Versus Nia, Shayna, and Bailey. And basically, the entire time Bailey was being overlooked because she had nothing to do with this whatsoever, but she was still forced into the match just because she was there. And she had to wrestle in her socks because she did not have the prop footwear. Good. Because <laughs> she had to wrestle in socks. I'm like, oh, poor Bailey. But Nia, Shayna, and Bailey got the win because Reginald. Wait, actually, that's a lie. That's a lie. Naya picked up Reginald. Looked like he was going to slam him. Shayna, I mean not Shayna, shot Sasha and Bianca did a double drop kick basically to Reginald to topple Naya over and they all pinned her at once. And then there you go. Naya loses. And Reginald gets rejected again because he's Reginald. <laughs> he's a flippy boy. And Reginald he, cannot get a break. <laughs> would be cool to actually see him like compete in a legitimate match against you know another male superstar. That'd be cool. Yeah. Instead uh, of fighting in the women's division. <laughs> also, Reginald first male SmackDown Women Champion. <laughs> I could see that happening at this point. For some reason. Also, another very interesting moment happened. It seems from what I was able to get from this, they're trying to make the Alpha Academy heal. Yay! So that means I'll Rey... be able to hate them with no one objecting. <laughs> it was Ray and Dominic versus Otis and Chad Gable. So they're in the ring. Otis is in the ring with Ray Mysterio, I believe. Chad Gable comes in. He's not the illegal man. He's slowly getting counted because he's not the legal man and he's in the ring. And he's trying to instruct Otis to go for like a power slam kind of thing. So they lose by disqualification because Chad Gable doesn't get out of the ring. Well, after Otis slams him, <clears throat> Chad tells him to get onto the second rope and Otis delivers a splash to Rey Mysterio off the second rope, which basically makes me think that they're trying to be heels because, you know, Rey and Dominic are faces and Otis is attacking Rey after the match, which is not what a face does. I would like to say something. So, basically, what you're saying is the entire thing of turning Tucker heel on Otis <laughs> now irrelevant because Otis is a heel. <laughs> basically, the, well, it seems like they're a heel. I'm, I could be wrong, but that's what it seemed they were trying to imply. Okay. And then the main event what? was Jey Uso, Sami Zayn, and Baron Corbin versus Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan, and Cesaro. Why? And the face is won. Yay! <laughs> Oh, so everybody, that. everybody hits their finishers on each other. Roman hits a Roman comes out, hits a spear, 
Actually, correction. Edge comes out and hits a spear on Jay. Then Roman comes out and hits a spear on Edge. That's going to come in handy in the next couple days. because We'll, we'll, we'll talk happened. about what happens. <laughs> and yeah, that's it for SmackDown. All right, so we would talk about the Scottish qualifiers for the Pro Wrestling World Cup, but I was not available that day. So we will get back to you guys next week. So let's talk about uh, Elimination Chamber. Let's do what we did with Rumble and go um, match by match. Yep. Um, Robbie, um, odds are evens. <laughs> uh, I think, did I have odds last time? I think you did. Do you want evens? Actually, no, I'll take odds again. I'll just take right. odds again. Cool. So you get to talk about... Um, you get to talk about Elimination Chamber 1. And we are counting Miz, by the way. <laughs> we'll talk about what happens. You're you're going to be doing the first Elimination Chamber. I'm going to be doing Roman versus that winner. We'll talk about who okay. it is. You will be doing the U.S. title match. Yep. I'll be doing the women's tag title match. You will be doing the, <laughs> the second okay. Elimination Chamber <laughs> And you'll be doing what happened after that. Exactly. All right. So, Robbie, quick rundown of the first elimination chamber. I may interject because I have a few spots that I want to talk about. All right. Well, we actually finally got to be together in person to watch this. Yes, we did. <laughs> and it was fun. It was very fun. I liked it. Gonna have to do that again for fast lane. Oh, yeah. face. <laughs> and so, maybe, maybe now that we can, maybe we. Um, do a we we already talked about this podcast episode, show episode in yes. person. You guys get ready for that. <laughs> Maybe next week, possibly. Maybe next week, possibly. <laughs> Maybe, but I thought it was a pretty good match. The winner was very unexpected. Yes, and so, before he says who it is, can I say something? Yes. So we did the predictions game. <laughs> It was me, Robbie, and my dad. We actually switched it up a little. We did not say who our predictions were during the match. We wrote them down. All three of us wrote down the same person, and all three of us were wrong. <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly. Robbie, take it away. So, it was basically Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, Jay Uso, Kevin Owens, King Corbin, and Sami Zayn. So, to no surprise at all, King Corbin and Sami Zayn were the first people to be eliminated. Yay! <laughs> then after that, to my complete utter shock and horror, Kevin Owens, the <laughs> to person all that we all picked, shock and horror, <laughs> the person that we all picked was then eliminated. We, because he was in a feud with Roman, we were all yeah hundred like, percent certain he was going to win. He did not win. Yeah, he we wasn't even all the last thought, eliminated. We all thought he was going to win. <laughs> he wasn't even the last eliminated. He was the third eliminated. Although we'll talk about what happened in the other chamber match too. <laughs> well, that that was for you and your dad, not for me. Though. <laughs> but yeah, basically, it came down to Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, and Jay Uso. And I'm going to be honest, after that happened, I was kind of rooting for Cesaro because, let's be real, Cesaro deserves a world title match eventually. Nah. Like, come on. Now, um, before before you move on, can I say, can I talk about a spot that I like? Yes. So Cesaro is swinging Daniel Bryan. <laughs> I didn't see this until I saw the review of it because I think I missed this spot. Perfect timing. Jey Uso comes in, super kicks Cesaro. <laughs> And runs in for the pin. That is probably one of the best chamber spots not involving the actual chamber that I have seen. <laughs> oh, no, it was quite funny because I think at the beginning of the match, I said, I can guarantee you somebody's going to fly off the pod. And I'm pretty sure in the very first match, somebody flew off the pod. I'm pretty sure <laughs> Jey Uso flew off the pod. And in the other and match, someone flew it. off the pod. <laughs> I don't think no, and no, surprisingly, nobody went through the pod. Yeah, in neither match, actually. Surprise! I surprisingly, but so I expected him to pull an Otis and go through the pod and the. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Cesaro was eliminated. 
So it came down to Danny Bryan, Jey Uso. Danny Bryan and Jey Uso. Danny Bryan and Jey Uso. I believe Danny Bryan hits a running knee on Jey Uso mm-hmm. and picks up the victory. We did not expect Danny Uso to win. <laughs> not at all. Um, but going into that, it's my turn. Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns. Actually a little bit more competitive than we thought it was going to be. Me and Robbie picked Roman. (laughs) Dad picked Bryan. Let's talk about what happened. So, beginning of the match, Roman goes for a spear, immediately gets put in the (laughs) S-lock. I was like, oh my god, he has a chance. Immediately gets put in the S-lock. Roman fights out of it, just starts delivering haymakers to (laughs) Bryan. Ow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I hit my, hit my dresser. Not my dresser. I hit my TV stand. Um, but just delivering haymakers to where it basically knocks Brian out. He gets him in the guillotine. Ta-da! Roman wins. <laughs> um, we we both got a point in it. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, Robbie. <laughs> That's you literally the something. entire match. What? Oh forgot. yeah. <laughs> I forgot about this. So, after the match, Roman is celebrating his title win, and all of a sudden, Edge comes in, <laughs> steers Roman, points to the sign, Pyro goes off, I've never seen a more clear sign, Edge versus <laughs> Roman Reigns, WrestleMania 37 main event. And they officially confirmed it. They officially confirmed the it pay-per-view. after it. After the pay-per-view? I mean, they confirmed it on commentary, too, dude. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. After <laughs> after that, I thought, yeah, yeah never mind. Yeah, they we confirmed it on commentary as well. Yeah. All right, Robbie, <laughs> U.S. So, another match that at the time I was shocked about the outcome, but now thinking about it, I can see why it happened. He was shocked Riddle, because he got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Riddle versus Bobby Lashley versus John Morrison because Keith Lee was injured, or I guess taken out of the match. And John Morrison had to win a fatal four-way match on the pre-show to get added to the match. Don't talk to us about that match. We didn't watch pre-show. <laughs> it was a very good match, in my opinion. Even though it didn't even last 10 minutes, I thought it was a very good match. In the end, Matt Riddle took, or I guess Riddle, took MVP's crutch, hit Lashley in the back with it twice to knock him out of the ring. He hit the bro Derek on Morrison. <laughs> New U.S. champion, Riddle. Okay, and so... At the time... <laughs> oh, continue? No, say who you picked. <laughs> so, I picked Lashley. Because <laughs> the past, like, month, he has been wrecking literally everyone. So, I was very certain that Lashley was going to retain. Me and my dad but, picked Riddle. <laughs> but, I can see why he lost now. Okay. The entire point of the match being a triple threat was so that Lashley could lose the title without, without the getting end. pinned. Ah. And okay. I realized that a little bit too late. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you see, here's my thing. And this is out of something that you just said. What type of a finisher move name <laughs> is the Bro Derek? <laughs> I don't even know what the name is supposed to be without the bro part. Who is Derek? <laughs> Who is Derek? And why is he a bro? (laughs) But yes, my dad and me picked Riddle. He picked Lashley like a noob. Um, So it was... (laughs) The the bro Derek is basically a reverse neutralizer. That's that's exactly what it is. (laughs) Um, So it was one point him, two points me, one point my dad. I was now one point ahead. Yeah. Next up, women's tag titles. Um, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks and Bianca. What are you staring at? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. Um, we we tech- we already spoiled this in our NXT <laughs> um, review of the week. <laughs> you oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Bianca Bel not Bianca Belair. <laughs> Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax won. Um, we all picked them, so it was two to three to two. And, um, but there's really nothing I can say about this match. I mean, there's nothing I remember from it. It was not no, a very Re- memorable match. Reginald cost 
Oh, yes. Bianca Reginald Bianca tried to give Sasha Banks a champagne bottle to you. Sasha Banks re- rejected it. The referee saw the champagne bottle in Sasha's hand, grabbed it, threw it. Naya, roll, I believe it was a roll up? No, it was a. I think she, she hit her and they hit a leg drop. Oh, yeah. And um, so, yeah, Naya and Jax win thanks to Reginald, uh, indirectly. Mm-hmm. Indirectly helping them. Yeah. Um, Reginald, stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> go back to Carmella or go to the men's division. Sasha Banks not, exactly. wants nothing to do with you. <laughs> exactly. And you just made it worse, my guy. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens this way. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk. So, yeah, that was basically that match. Robbie, you got the last Chamber match. All right, so the WWE Championship Chamber match. Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles, Kofi Kingston. Jeff Hardy, Randy Orton, and Sheamus. It was a very good match. Surprisingly, to my utter shock, Randy was the first guy to be eliminated. Yeah, and that's what annoyed the crap out of me. <laughs> because he me and my dad picked Randy. <laughs> and he was the first one to go. And he lost because of a roll-up. Yeah, by Kofi. <laughs> But then he RKO'd everybody. And Are we back in 2019? Was, yeah. What the heck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, very good match. It was at the final two was Drew and AJ. And oh my god. Drew, so AJ went for the phenomenal forearm. Um, just quick side note, almost was ejected. Oh yeah, because he ripped he ripped the, AJ out of his pod. <laughs> he ripped the glass off of the pod. So AJ could be let in early after all the RKOs so he can get a pin, and it didn't even work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was great. Also, the final of the match, AJ goes to the forearm. When he jumps off the top rope, Drew McIntyre gets up and hits this man with a claymore in mid air. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, that was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drew retains. I get a point. I'm the winner after the quiz Not, that we had, which I also yeah. won. We we had a quiz because we tied. That's why he won. He didn't win because he got the most points. And plus, he forgot about a match, which I will talk about now. <laughs> But I also got that one right, so it doesn't really matter. That's true. Drew is celebrating in the ring. All of a sudden, Bobby Lashley (laughs) comes in. And no, I know the reason now. I know the reason. Remember, you actually said it, dude. Not here. You said it off camera. You said MVP said that he would be the reason McIntyre loses his title. Miz was talking to MVP. MVP sent in Lashley. (laughs) (laughs) Ta-da. So, Lashley Spears, um, Drew, I was about to say Roman, he Spears Drew, <laughs> beats up Drew, and all of a sudden, I came to, came to okay, <laughs> Miz comes out, with money in the bank, briefcase, DDT's McIntyre, pins, two count, picks him up, skull crushing finale, Miz is the new WWE champion, why? <laughs> <laughs> My prediction is he loses a uh, fast lane. <laughs> if he even gets the fast lane, <laughs> to, to we'll talk his, about that in a minute. To have his match against Bad Bunny at WrestleMania. <laughs> and lose. And to lose. A celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> with minimal wrestling training. <laughs> Why? Right, let's talk. Let's talk about Raw. Bobby, give us a quick rundown so we can get to the next segment. So basically. Lashley wants his WWE title match because the entire point. So MVP and Miz were talking before the Elimination Chamber match, the final one. Mm-hmm. The entire point of them talking, they made an agreement. Lashley attacks Drew, which allows Dr- Miz to cash in his money to make contract win the title. If Miz can win the title, Lashley should be first in line. Miz won the title. But now that he's champion, he, of course, is being a heel and doesn't want to fight Lashley. 
Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so Lashley says, I give you one hour to give me a title match. And if you do not, I will send you to the emergency room. So an hour passes and nothing really exciting happens in between there. <laughs> but let's be real. An hour passes. Let's be real. It's Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Lashley comes out. An hour's up. Miss comes out. Says he wants to delay the proceedings and wants to wait another week. Well, then all of a sudden Braun comes out and says he wants a title match because he was a former Universal Champion. And then Shane comes out and says, no, the chamber match was for former WWE Champions, not Universal Champions. So, of course, Braun is angry. Wrong brand. He He wants a title match with Miz. Shane says no. So he wants a match with Lashley. Shane says yes. If Braun can win, he will be added to the WWE Championship match between Bobby Lashley and Miz, which is happening next week. And he will be it, it will be a triple threat match. He Miz, I hope you, match. Miz, I hope you have fun with that title. <laughs> he did not win that match. So it's Bobby Lashley versus the Miz for the WWE Championship. Next yes, I hope you have fun with that title. <laughs> and I can tell you right now, I highly doubt he's losing it. I hope he does. <laughs> I think he's going to retain it via interference, or Drew's going to come in and kick Lashley's head off. Either way, Miz is walking out as champion. Ooh. <laughs> and then he'll probably lose it at Fastlane, so he can lose the money at WrestleMania, as you said. <laughs> no, bro. Imagine this. Bad Bunny versus Miz at WrestleMania for the title. Yeah, let's not do that, please. <laughs> Let, let's 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 not do that, please. Bad Bunny wins. Let's let's not do that, please. <laughs> I will stop watching if that happens. I will legitimately <laughs> stop watching if that happens. Watch, I just predicted it. <laughs> oh. All right, let's let's go into personal questions, but first, ta-da. and you know what? We are just gonna do regular questions because that's faster. Yes. So this is on the raw section. Indeed. Robbie, I need you. Hang on. Okay. So let me get the answers. Robbie, I need you to pick a number between 117 and 132. 120. Okay. Robbie, your question is... One week after the June... 28th, 1999 episode of Raw. Okay. I lost the question. Okay. What tandem won their first WWE Tag Team Championships in just minutes from their hometown of Cameron, North Carolina? I'm pretty sure we already did that. It's the Hardy Boys. Well, yeah, it's the Hardy Boys. (laughs) Cool. Okay. (laughs) Okay, moving on. All right, let's talk about personal questions. Robbie, you have a question. I actually did think of a question. So, you're walking down the street one day, and you see your favorite wrestler. Oh, no. How would you react in that situation? Favorite or least favorite? (laughs) Your favorite. Okay. We can do least favorite another day, but today is your favorite. Okay. I'll go first. If I was walking down the street and I saw my favorite wrestler, who would happen to be? Actually, I have a few of them. I have to think. Um, I would I would act normal. I would walk up to them, say hi, get an autograph, take a selfie, ask them to appear on the podcast. <laughs> you know, completely normal stuff. <laughs> yes. Ask them to pay my college tuition. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i would i would act normal until i walk away and then i would fanboy <laughs> like say it was okay. say it was ricochet i would act normal walk over ask for an autograph ask for a picture that's be on the show <laughs> and then walk away and it's like oh my god it's ricochet <laughs> yeah. um robbie your turn <laughs> so if I were to, see, it, w- it would depend on the circumstance. If the wrestler is alone, like not with anybody, I would probably be like, "Oh my god!" and then like walk over and very politely ask for a picture, 
and then walk away. However, if they are with somebody, like if they're talking with somebody, out of respect for their privacy, I would probably leave them alone and then hate myself for the rest of the day. And I would just take a picture from a distance. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't listen to us. That's just a joke. <laughs> don't do that. Especially to Randy Orton. He would probably come over and, like, smack you across the face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you did that to him. Yeah. According to a story that I've seen. All right. Let's talk. Let's talk games. We're going to do two games. Um, we're going to do one creative storyline each and then a few guest wrestling. Okay. So, Robbie, this is a SmackDown question. Yeah. Pick a number between 52 and 66. Aw. Uh, 56. <laughs> Okay, don't say aw. This is a family show. Aw. <laughs> you keep your aws to yourself, mister. <laughs> 52. Okay. Here we go. Wait, did you say... What did you say? I said 56. 56. Okay, here we go. What was the name of the tavern in Providence, Rhode Island, at which New Day, the New Age Outlaws, and the APA had a barroom brawl? Do I get options? No, you do not. It was on the episode of January 20th, 2000. I have no idea. It was the Friendly Tap. It's the name of the tavern. I wouldn't have gotten that. Unless All I right. watched the episode. Which I probably won't anytime soon. <laughs> it's just a random episode of SmackDown, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. All right. I have the messed up cup. That means it's time for creative storylines. Oh boy. The cup has Let's taken some damage. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> Could be easily fixed with some flex tape. Up. <laughs> All right, Robbie. Okay. Okay, that is actually really intriguing. Oh, wait, and if you need me to pull anyone, if you want to add anyone to the story, remember they have to be pulled. Hmm. Let's just say Sammy is still a conspiracy theorist. Okay. He thinks the world is against him, which is like wonderful. Best so, character ever. He decides to go and spread that message to NXT. Dun, dun, dun. So he goes to NXT, talks about that. That's where he started. That's where his most success was, for the most part. And he hasn't been treated fairly on the main roster. So he wants to go against one of NXT's top stars to prove that, you know, he, he, he still got it. He's still, you know, everything is okay down in NXT. He's, he's being treated fairly. Well, out comes Roderick Strong. And so they face off at a match. And Roderick Strong beats him. And so after that, NXT, I mean, not NXT, Sammy, <laughs> Sammy just has a complete mental breakdown in the ring. NXT has a complete mental breakdown in the ring. I mean, they might, you know, when it come, when they see those AEW ratings. <laughs> well, let's not talk about that. Going. <laughs> That's all I feel like talking about. Just Sammy having, right. having a mental breakdown. All right. Sammy having a mental breakdown. That's how we ended. That's fine. That was a good Fair ending. <laughs> you're, you're better at this than I am. Let's be real. <laughs> um, I'm not doing intergender. You can't make me. <laughs> what was it going to be? Um, It would have been Luke Ellis versus Ruby Riot. No. I'd love to see how you would have 
No. Not one. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Yikes. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> so... Can I make Aikum a cruiserweight? Is that possible? <laughs> no. Dang it. <laughs> you cannot convince anybody that he is a cruiserweight in any way, shape, or form. What if I can get him down to cruiserweight size? No. <laughs> Give him anorexia. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, fine. We'll do, um... Because I was going to make TJP the cruiserweight champion, but... Since I can't do that, <laughs> I'll make him the U.S. champion. TJP is the U.S. champion, and he calls for an open challenge. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Akum comes out without Razor, and TJP is mocking him, basically. About, oh, where's your partner? You can't do anything by yourself. So Akum gets in the ring and completely wrecks TJP. <laughs> Obviously. He gets on the mic. Looks over, stands over TJP's body, says straight out, I don't need Razor anymore. Drops the mic onto TJP, walks away. So, we have a match scheduled for, let's just say, payback. Okay, safe, non for pay per view. Yep. TJP versus Akum for the U.S. title. Now, before this, TJP had a promo on Akum saying, I'm going to prove just how much Akum actually needs Razor in his corner. Okay. So, match happens. It's a great match. All of a sudden, you know, I love interference. Oh, God, you do. Because <laughs> yeah. of sure female. storyline you've had involved in interference. Uh, it, it's fun. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Shitsuke Nakamura comes out to help TJP. Kinshasa's Akum while the referee's back is turned. TJP wins. Uno, dos, tres. Okay. Akum comes out the next next week. On. So Akum is in the ring the week after payback, and he says, in basic terms, TJP is a coward. He needed Shinsuke Nakamura to help him win. He wanted to prove to me that I needed a partner, but I want to prove to him that I can do it alone. So, tonight on Raw versus TJP, if Shinsuke Nakamura interferes, TJP automatically loses the title. So we get the match, U.S. title. Akam, Re Akam Razor, I was about to... <laughs> <laughs> Akam versus TJP. U.S. title, if Shinsuke Nakamura interferes, TJP loses the title. So we actually have a good, solid one-on-one -on -one match. Give them like 15 minutes to see what they can do. Okay. In the end, Akum actually wins, <laughs> proving that he can be a single star. I actually do like Akum in real life. I think I think they underused him in real life, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, so Akum is the new U.S. champion. Now Nakamura comes out. <laughs> Kinshasa's Akum, but... Screw it! <laughs> Okay. Tyler Bate comes out. It's a Tyler Driver 97 on Nakamura. Hits one on hits one on TJP and stands next to Akum. Akum grabs a mic, says, "I do not need you, Tyler. Why are you here?" <laughs> Tyler takes the mic from him and says, "I'm not here because of you. I'm here because of Chinsky. Let's just say they've been having a rivalry on the sideline." 